Hello Explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna continue learning about Linux. Next up we will install Autoconf. And Autoconf is also a good tooling for build. So this is a build tool. Uh, it contains uh, something that can produce shell scripts and automatically can configure source code <laughs> so it's actually used to create a configure scripts in many cases uh, and configure scripts can have very specific requirements uh, in them so this autoconf tool will look into the system and see if uh, some things are available and then create a configure script that is more reasonable to re uh, run. So it produces a shell script that automatically configures software. We can, we can start off by fixing uh, a bug again for Perl uh, in the auto scan. And then we will start a configure and we can talk a little bit about more about these tools here. So autoconf, yeah, and we can run the make as well. Uh, so it will configure software source code packages to adapt many kinds of Unix-like systems. Uh, so it produces a, a config scripts that are independent and running them does not require the autoconf uh, program. Uh, so let's do a check on this as well. Uh, then we have an out header that is here as well and it, this will create template uh, defines in an uh, header file so you can auto generate um, information for the build process there as well uh, we have auto 4 mt and this is a wrapper for the m4 microprocessor we have auto reconf and it runs uh, all uh, the tools here auto conf auto header uh, ac local auto make and get tag size and lib to lies and all of those again so it runs a lot of them in sequence we have auto scan it helps us to create these configure in files and those in files are what the autoconf will later use in order to create configuration files uh, so yeah, it, it's tooling to help you create configure scripts for your build process. I actually stopped the uh, test here and you see there is a lot of failed ones. And I read here that the test suit is currently broken due to bash 5 and libtool, the, the versions that we are using. So they don't see any reasons to run the tests, so why should I? Uh, we just install it and we, we will know that it is broken uh, at the moment. The tools should work anyway. Uh, next one that we want to install is another one of these auto tools, but it's not in the conf. It's because it's quite large. It's the auto make. I believe it was created before the auto conf uh, tooling. So that might be why it's separate. The AutoMake package contains programs for generating make files uh, for use with the AutoConf. Okay, um, so let's uh, configure it. It sets the document directory and the prefix. So we have seen that before. We will run make. It should go quite fast it wasn't that large and we also have a check here that we can run uh, with four CPUs and that can take a little bit of time about seven uh, SPUs and this will this package will contain the AC local so AC local will um, generate AC local M4 files for the configure in files. My experience with AC local 
is that you run that first in order to set some of the environment uh, information before you run automake. Uh, so it will set some of the uh, variables for you that automake then uses in order to create your configure script. So automake is a tool that automatically generating automake in files from automake am files to create all the make in files for a package run the program in the top level directory by scanning the config in file in uh, it automatically finds the appropriate automake am file and generates corresponding automake in file okay and i guess that it will combine uh, different instructions as well so uh, this is you run out AC local then auto make and then I guess auto conf and then you run configure and you will then have the um, files the make files required for building your system so it's a full suit of a lot of different tools in order to build other packages and usually if you are downloading a package that you need to install either in that package when you have unpacked it there will be either a readme file or an install file and those will have those names and be in the root directory of the package that you un, uh, unzipped. And those, if you read those files, you will usually get instructions on how to build that specific package. And that can include running AC local first, and then running out to make, then running out to conf, and then running configure, then run make, and then make install, for instance. So you will get all the instructions required to make a specific package. It's not usual that you download an open source package without any instruction on how to install it. Because when somebody is creating a tool or some library and they want it to be used, because if you are <laughs> creating open software, for everyone, what you want is it for it to spread and want people to actually use your software. So you try to make it as easy as possible to get it installed and get it to run and, and get up and running with your software. So that's how you can find build instructions and how you can get started with a specific tool if you just download the source code and want to install it. Uh, we will wait for this tests to be done and then we need to install Automic. And we are back and it took longer than I expected, um, but we have 39 expected failures, we have a lot of passes, and we have some skip tests. So that seems really good. Let's install Automake. Then we have a few more packages we want to install. We want XZ, and this is a way to compress things. So it's like gzip and the other ones. Uh, might be a little bit more performance and we don't see anything special here it's a, st a standard configure script with prefix disable static and doc directory so the xx patches contain programs for compressing and decompressing some files it provides capabilities for lzma and the ne newer X XZ compression formats. So let's run a make here while I'm talking. Compressing text files with XZ yields a better compression percentage than with the traditional GZIP and BZIP2. So this should be a better uh, version of the other one. 
uh, ones. Uh, let's run a quick check here and see if it, do it does a good job of compressing stuff. And in this we will have LZ cat so we can uh, cat things inside of compressed files. We have LZ diff and LZ compare, LZ egrep. So we have a lot of LZ commands that are usually inside of uh, the normal system, but you put LZ before and you can use them like LZ more. And you also have XZ cat and XZ diff and so on. So you can run commands on compressed files um, with those kind of compressions as well. So that's very handy. Test make went well, so let's make install. Then we want to move all the binaries over to the bin directory, or some of the binaries. We want to uh, move the uh, two libraries that we have over to the lib directory. And then we make a link back for those libraries to the lib directory, as we usually do. Next package that we want to unpack here and install is kmod. It's also a small one, kmod. And let's configure that one. That's the usual prefix and bin directory sysconf dir, so that's where the configuration of the system is. Root lib dir, this is an option that ensures that different libraries related files are placed in the correct lib directory. And with xz and xlib, uh, zlib, this means that kmod will use the uh, Okay, so this will enable the option of kmod handling compressed com uh, kernel modules. So that's something that we really want because we don't want our kernel modules to get too large. Um, uh, often compressed things are actually faster to load. And uh, then we want to make this package as usual. So this package does not come with the test suit, but can be run in the LFS uh, root environment. Okay. And when this is done, we will install. And with this uh, command, we will get dep mod and this create dependency file based on symbol it finds in the existing modules. Ins mod installs loadable modules. This I use very much. Uh, this is very good command uh, when you have a module that you have built for your kernel and you want your system to uh, run that uh, or install that module. So that is very useful. Then you have kmod that loads and unload kernel modules. List current loaded modules, lsmod. Uh, mod info can get the information. Mod probe uses dependency file created by M uh, dmod to automatically load relevant modules. So that's good as well. And error mode is to unload modules from the kernel. Then we want to run this little script here, which is a little bit of a for loop that runs for dep mod, ins mod, ls mod, uh, mod info, mod probe and error mod and it will create links for each of these to the sbin directory and then we want to uh, create the last link here for, uh, between kmod and ls mod so ls mod is actually kmod and so that's a different name uh, I think we have done a lot here and this video will be broken into smaller parts and uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Linux and different components of Linux 
And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.